Hi there guys and welcome back to some more Nathy B reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, the PS1 game, as you may have seen on my Flashback Friday series. So let's get into it. Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace is a great game based on the film of the same name. Lightsabers, force powers and a ridiculous extended take on the film make for a brilliant Star Wars action-adventure RPG. Released in 1999, this LucasArts game was available on both the PlayStation and PC. This review is going to be on the PlayStation 1 version. So if you've seen the film, you'll know all about this story. But if you're not much of a Star Wars fan, then this is the fabled story of how I met Lord Vader. Qui-Gon Jinn and his apprentice Obi-Wan Kenobi embark on a mission to oversee negotiations over a trade dispute, which then turns into an invasion, you know how it is. Following a fight and then a rescue mission for the Queen of Naboo, they end up on the Outer Rim system planet Tatooine, in need of parts to repair their damaged ship. They meet a boy, free him from slavery, go to see their superiors, have a big lightsaber fight and a space battle, you know, standard Star Wars stuff. Of course, this is then fleshed out to show you more of the planets that they visit, i.e. Naboo, Tatooine and Coruscant, as they are the only three planets in that film. The gameplay is actually quite awkward at first, with the camera being a hybrid of an over-the-shoulder third-person view and a top-down view. This can cause confusion at certain areas of the game, especially with uh, some of the more maze-like areas such as Tatooine. But as a whole, it's quite a unique take on how you see a game and of course is probably designed that way so that it's not so straightforward to find everything. There are some aspects of the game that I think are quite advanced um, for a game this old. In particular, the deflection of laser beams with the lightsaber. I've never really come across a game up until this point where you could uh, use defensive abilities to uh, damage your opponents. That is of course one of the key elements of having a lightsaber. So yeah, pretty good. The game features all of your favourites from the film as well, including Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, Anakin, Padme, Darth Maul and of course the infamous Jar Jar Binks. The controls, like most PlayStation games um, at the time, were very simple. You use uh, the square button to attack or uh, deflect bullets, so it's, it's one move for you know any sort of uh, swipe with the lightsaber. Plus. With the game being released in 1999, the DualShock controller wasn't about then, so you literally turn your character by pressing left and right, and you walk forwards and backwards with up and down, which of course is like the original uh, Resident Evil game. As with all PS1 games, the graphics look awful in comparison to what we have now. Today, this game really looks like it was drawn in paint. Badly. But you can still tell who's who. The faces aren't really recognisable, but there are distinct features for every character that will show you that that is that character. Firstly, with Qui-Gon, obviously you can see his long hair and also his facial hair. Uh, with Obi-Wan, you can see the braid going down one of his cheeks and onto his, his tunic. And of course, with the famous villain Darth Maul, you can recognise his red and black face. This like the Harry Potter game that I reviewed before, looks way better on an old box TV. So I really encourage you to play it on an older style TV so that you don't get so much of a stretched look of the game. So we're gonna go on to the aspects of the game now, starting with the locations uh, included. The game features all of the locations from the film, uh, including Naboo, Coruscant and Tatooine, as I mentioned before, as well as the Trade Federation ship that you actually start the game on. Each level, has a unique design that encapsulates the feel and uh, look of each yeah. of the locations in the movie as far as a PlayStation 1 game can go. Some locations have been added that you didn't see in the film, including the Gardens of Theed, which is actually <laughs> what I feel one of the hardest levels in the actual game. The expanded locations really make for the toughest uh, experience as you don't really know what's coming um, compared to the locations that are actually in the film. So. They really did a good job of building each level, as well as keeping it in line with the film as much as they could. So now we're going to go on to the weapons that are used in the game. So Star Wars is obviously known for lightsaber battles, and you'd expect to have a lightsaber within a Star Wars game, to some degree. And generally, the films don't have too many different uh, 
um, weapon types. But this game really has a lot of weapons that you have the option to use throughout the game. Obviously lightsabers are the main weapon of choice. You have the defensive capability of deflecting bullets and obviously hitting something with a lightsaber is pretty much guaranteed to kill it. However, you do have the option to use the likes of blaster rifles, rocket launchers, thermal detonators and Gungan uh, energy balls to name a few. There are also more that can be found throughout the game. It also means that you can play the game how you want to. It really gives you that adaptability to make it a shooter rather than being, you know, like a, a slash and dash sort of sort of game. Ultimately, there are levels where you have to use a blaster. You're not always the Jedi in Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. There are levels where you are Captain Panaka. His level is on Coruscant. And then when you actually reach Naboo uh, at the end of the game for the last couple of levels, you play as Queen Amidala. For her, you actually have like an electric um, stun gun sort of thing that actually makes the enemy attack themselves. Um, particularly useful against droids. It is quite cool that it actually forces you to utilize the different weapons that you have at your disposal. I think being able to change the way that you play the game really makes it a unique experience every time you play through. Uh, for example, you could play through just using the lightsabers that you, that you have to use. Another time you could just go through with a blaster rifle, provided you can keep your ammo, of course, stocked up as best you can. So with each planet comes usually a different style of enemy. There are several enemies that you have to fight throughout the game, including uh, Tusken Raiders on Tatooine, Battle Droids on Naboo. When you visit Otagunga, uh, the Gungans can be very hostile, and so <laughs> you may end up fighting a couple of those, as well as, of course, the big bad of Darth Maul at the end. The enemies generally get tougher the further you get into the game. In the first couple of levels, most things are pretty much one-hit kills. Uh, battle droids, Gungans. Um, the toughest enemy you'll actually find in the beginning of the game, probably the destroyer droids, that take several hits. Um, and you'll, of course, have to break down their shield anyway. It's usually best just to avoid them. You'll also find yourself coming up against bounty hunters, uh, in particular when you are... Uh, on Coruscant and also Tatooine. They tend to be able to take a few more hits, the same with um, Jabba's guards. You do meet a few of those as well as Jabba the Hutt himself. Can't kill him, but you meet him. The variety of enemies is quite good for such an old Star Wars game. It really incorporates all of the different factions that you'll actually find throughout the Star Wars universe. Talking about enemies, we have to speak about Darth Maul. He is, of course, a formidable opponent. And as expected, you have to fight him twice in the game. Once on Tatooine as you escape, where you you don't really fight him for that long, provided you can stay alive. You just have to be able to make it back to the ship. And if you take down enough of his health, you will automatically go into the ship and uh, fly away, as they do. Then at the end, of course, you have the final battle with Darth Maul. He is really quite a tough boss to have to take down. Even though, of course, you have the AI teammate of Qui-Gon uh, when you're fighting Darth Maul in the final battle, he never really does too much. Never really takes down Darth Maul's health, but if you time your, your lightsaber slashes right, you can take down his health without really taking yours down too much. Of course, it's not always just a straightforward battle with an emboss, and you do actually have to do quite a lot of um, exploring uh, in the in the final stages of the of the game. Darth Maul, of course, then kills Qui Gon, and you seemingly kill Darth Maul in this game. In the film, he's obviously cut in half, and he falls down the generator pit in Naboo. In this game, you actually fight him on top of a scaffold over the top of the generator pit and you, he just dies on there. He doesn't actually fall into the pit, unfortunately. Being able to take on Darth Maul in this game is really quite fun and uh, it really makes for a great fight. So if you can get to that stage, you should definitely give it a go. So Star Wars Episode One may not have been a fan favorite film, but I, like many others, feel that this game is absolutely brilliant and I highly recommend you give it a go. It's so much fun, really difficult in places and yeah, just a really great Star Wars experience. So much so that I would actually put it in my top three Star Wars games 
of all time. So many Star Wars games have many great aspects to them, but this really is a unique take on not only the film, but also the camera angle and the way you go about things. So, as I said before, I really recommend this, and if you can find a copy, get it. Seriously. So with all games that I review, I will be giving them a score and this game gets a score of over 20,000 Metachlorians. Over 20,000? Even Master Yoda doesn't have a Metachlorian count that high. So you know that it's the chosen one. So give it a go. So that is it for this review. As always guys, thank you for watching. If you have any feedback for me, which I really would appreciate on these reviews, then please leave in a comment below. If you'd like to keep up to date with everything that I'm doing, including more Nathy B reviews, then please subscribe and I will see you next time.